Welcome everyone to the Low Fi Poly Side Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pickering. That's right. Low Fi is in low fidelity, low quality, in your face, messy as can be global news show. Here we're gonna talk about our famous question: what's going on in the world today? It's Wednesday, time for that lo-fi global news, fresh off that press, from the America section of Reuters. Gunmen assassinate Haitian president at his home. Hunt launched for killers. Around 1 a.m. Wednesday, July 7, unidentified assailants entered the president's home and assassinated him and critically wounded his wife. His wife is in the process of being transferred to a hospital in the U.S. somewhere. Outside of that, we know almost nothing for certain. And you know we don't speculate. You know, a two-week state of emergency has been called by the newly appointed prime minister. But what exactly that means, we're still waiting to see that too. Like, for real, people, we almost never see the assassination of a world leader. This is off-limits territory that pretty much everyone respects because they know if you start assassinating one country's leader, then it opens the door for years to be assassinated as well. So the international killing of a country's leader is extremely taboo and really never done. You know, we have to wait and see what happens and what facts are provided to the public. You know, as of now, the country's borders are shut and there is a massive manhunt going on. Outside of that, there are some things being speculated and talked about, but those are all unconfirmed. And therefore, we are going to wait and see. We'll update you when we find out more for sure, people. Next up, source, the Africa section of the BBC. Egypt accuses Ethiopia of violating law over controversial dam. You know, in recent months, we've talked about how the last-ditch effort of talks between Sudan, Egypt, and Ethiopia to come to an agreement about this dam and the control of the flow of the Nile had all ended in failure. And now Ethiopia is filling up that dam, and Egypt is pissed. You know, Egyptian President Sisi has previously told Ethiopia, you walking on eggshells here. And Ethiopia? Well, it looks like they decided to go ahead and start stomping on those shells. Although this does possibly provide a bit of clarity for another story we've been talking about. And that's Ethiopia pulling out of the Tigray region. And recently, the Tigray militias taking over the Tigray capital. And the Ethiopian government calling for a ceasefire, which the Tigrayans refuse unless their government is recognized as legitimate. But taking all this together, you know, connecting some dots like we do, it could be that Ethiopia's government is backing off of Tigray because they're afraid of what President Sisi of Egypt is about to do. I find it highly unlikely that Ethiopia could withstand the Egyptian military forces as well as fighting Tigrayan forces at the same time. Eyes wide open on this one, Lofi Nation. Now, moving forward because we never move on from anything. Source, the India section of Reuters. Twitter loses immunity over user-generated content in India. What can we say? India gave Twitter orders about censoring certain content that criticized certain leaders in government. And now, since Twitter didn't comply, they are being made legally liable for any illegal content put up in tweets on their site in India. I mean, this is big, people. India may not be the freest democracy in the world by a long shot, no. But it is one of the freest countries in the world. And more and more countries, including this one, are trying to make internet social media sites liable for the content of their users. In fact, check out the U.S. News section of any paper. I bet you'll see something very similar to this today. But of course, that ain't this show. And our following story comes from that Europe section of the BBC. France in a fizz over Russia's champagne label law. Now really, this is just Russia trying to piss off France to no ends, my friends. If you don't know, let me tell you, France is very, very particular about their champagne. In fact, the only champagne that can be called champagne has to be from Champagne, France. Ridiculous or not, it is what it is. Now Russia said, oh, no more France. Your shit is nothing more than sparkling water. And that's what it better say on the bottle if you want it sold here. Only Russian-made bubbly may now be called, and forgive my Russian because I don't have any Russian, but Shampunskoye, I'll be curious how France answers this moving forward. And a last piece of news to send you on your way for the day, the business section of NPR. Iceland finds major success 
moving to shorter work week. Oh, a lo-fi cool read, people. How reducing your working hours in Iceland in a study between 2015 to 2019, from 40 hours to 35 or 36 hours, but without cutting your pay, that people were hella happier with their life and their work and productivity was not lost. And in some cases, productivity actually increased. Man, I love you, Iceland. I especially love the Icelandic band of monsters and men. I also love volcanoes in the ice. And I love you pushing for a shorter work week. Because we couldn't agree more with you, Iceland. Thank you much. And it's a brief snapshot of what's going on in the world today. Do you have top 10 list ideas for us? Send them on in to me. Do you have good news to share? Share it with us. Always remember that lo-fi poli is more than just me. It's the we and we be. Peace and well-being to all my human beings out there. Much love and always the best. Pickering, signing off.